Daily Coaching and the Accountability folks, David Halpern of Mastery Consulting to talk to you today about leverage. In fact, what I want to share with you today is a template for how to delegate, if you will. And this is a tool that's taught in business schools as a basic tool of leverage, and it's called the capture list. The capture list is nothing more than you journaling and jotting down everything you ever wanted to delegate and then some. And I want to show you what it looks like because I think if you employ this specific specific tool in your business, you'll find that you'll get traction here. You'll start to actually peel things off your plate little by little and lever because a businessman and a businesswoman's credo is to make more work less, impossible to do it uh, without employing the great levers of business, of which the greatest are marketing and people. So in fact, people is the greatest one. So here we go. Let me show you. And we're using the tool in my own business. So I'm teaching you what I use in my own coaching business or practice, right? So we're eating our own cooking without throwing up. So you can try this. It's not going to hurt you. Let me show you what it looks like. It's basically a capture list. If you guys can see it here, this is literally was our list of things that we wanted to delegate um, badly. So, and it's a whole list. It goes on and on and on and on. Whoops, wrong way there. I'm trying to do this backwards here. Uh, but you see, it's a giant list of things we want to get off our plate. Now, what goes on the capture list? And the answer is everything and anything you want to get off your plate. Small, large, things you think you should, definitely shouldn't be doing, things you're, you know, you're not even bothered if you keep it on your plate, things that you want to delegate right now, things that you don't think you'll have the ability to delegate until another two, three years from now. Everything goes on the capture list. That's why it's called the capture list. Next, next category. Ready? The next column is what I like to call protocol, if you can see this here. And what is protocol? Protocol is the steps in the process. In other words, if somebody else does it for you, then uh, if somebody else does it for you, they have to know what's expected of them. This is just the skeleton. This is not the qualitative side of what they're going to do for you. This is the purely quantitative skeletal side. Let me give you a real, uh, real life example. When Amani McDaniels, who's part of our team now, joined our team, the first project we ever gave her off this list was to contact people in our daily coaching and accountability program and invite them to an upcoming large scale event that we were doing, a coaching event, and to see if they were coming and which guests they were going to bring. So she had to track that. So we came up with a protocol for her. And the protocol is still in here, by the way. Uh, let's see if I can find it for you. It's somewhere in here. And it basically says, here we go. The protocol is one text and one phone call four weeks before event and one text and one phone call two weeks later. OK, so that's what it is. She had to reach out by text and phone to ask people, would you like to come? This is about a month before the event and the same thing two weeks before the event. That's the protocol. Now, does everybody here understand that if she's doing the protocol, then you're satisfied? The quality will be what the quality will be. It will likely be a decent job, right? So the key, the reason you have a column called protocol here is so that when you delegate to someone, you say, these are, this is what's required of the task. I'm going to macro manage you by watching your work online without micromanaging you and getting involved in the details or the scripting. That's how any great business owner builds. Okay. So that's the protocol. The protocol is a step. So I've seen people say, oh, we need to create an operations manual. There are people in your industries that have operations manuals of every step and every eventuality. I have never seen any of those things ever be used effectively. What a waste of time. A protocol is the very basic, simple steps that you require. And if they're being done, you're likely getting the result that you wish to get done. OK, let's continue. Now we put who it gets delegated to. And you can see some names in green and red and yellow. This was a list as of for us a couple of months ago. Um, but what it, what's on it is green means it's being done effectively and delegated to somebody with competence. Yellow means somebody is trying it out now and we're going to see if there's competency there. Red means it's either not delegated yet or it's not being handled effectively. That's our simple code. OK, let's continue. Next one. There's a weird little tiny column you can probably barely see. Let me make it larger here. That has numbers in it, like 175, 150, 75, et cetera. What's that? Believe it or not, that's actually my code to myself for what I would like to pay monthly for that particular task to be handled capably. So for that one task, I would pay somebody 150 bucks a month to do that task and get it off my plate with pleasure. 
what I'm comfortable with. I don't really care what, what the market bears. I don't care what other people want. This is what I'd be willing to pay for all day long. And I have a list of numbers in there. They're just notes to myself. I don't even use them literally, but it's a guidepost for me. Okay, next one. The cost benefit columns. Ooh, these are important. So business schools teach this as, as being critical. The cost is sweat equity cost. In other words, on a scale of one to 10, how badly do you want to get this freaking task off your plate? One being, please, please, somebody take this from me now. One being, yeah, I can keep doing it. It's not a big deal. Make sense? So this is cost in terms of the cost, the sweat equity to you, the brain damage that affects your business negatively because it keeps you away from your best activities, doing what you do best, your income producing activities, whatever. Okay, benefit. What's the benefit? The benefit is purely financial. Purely financial. We're thinking purely in financial terms. So on a scale of one to 10, if somebody else doing this capably is going to drive our revenues and profitability up big time, give it a 10. If somebody else doing it doesn't really have any impact on sales revenues or, or profitability whatsoever, give it a one. And by the way, that doesn't mean you don't want to delegate it. You may want to delegate it just to get it off your plate so you have more bandwidth of time to breathe and think and lever like all business people do, right? Okay, priority. How do you rank these things in terms of priority? And all I use is the traditional add together your cost plus your benefit. If you're desperate to get it off your plate, and it's also going to make you a lot more money if you get it off your plate, those should be the priority tasks to delegate. Now, this may sound crazy, now that we've done all of that, I don't actually delegate tasks in order of priority as much as you might think we should or you might like to. What I do is I actually bring people aboard and I love, many of you know, and we have these in other videos, I love bringing pre people aboard part-time. I love testing a whole bunch of people part-time and giving them one task to start. What I like to do is read through the whole capture list with them and walk them through every project here and say, pick one you think you'd like to start with, just one. And then I'll throw a dollar amount at them to pay them monthly for it and say, we'll just, you know, as you want to make more money, we'll just keep adding products, uh, you know, projects later. But let's just start with one and I let them pick. And the reason I let them pick is they usually know what works for them. Why on earth would I want to give people projects they don't want to do or that worry them? Give them something they can handle. And then after they're doing it capably for a week or two or three and you're seeing their, their work productivity, which we'll get to on another uh, video here, then you can together yeah, mutually add projects and and we can talk about pay increases on it again on some different videos here. But my objective is I don't care if, if I have 16 items on this capture list, I don't care if I get 16 people to do 16 tasks. And by the way, it's not usually going to work out that way. You'll get some people that will be terrific and become rock stars and start gobbling up your tasks. But what you do want to do is you want to start with people with one task only. Let them win for Pete's sakes. How many people have I seen where they hire somebody, they hire all the wrong people anyway, which we're not going to get to on this particular video, but they hire the wrong people and they overload them with tasks. And then they wonder why people can't get anything done to their satisfaction. And the people wonder why you're such a crappy leader. You, you dump on them. You've set them up to drown. I love to set up everyone to win. Give them, let them choose the task. Let them pick what they're going to work on. Watch them excel and then add projects from there if that makes sense. Now, you, now, they're going to pick projects and they may not be like your top ones. For example, I hired four part-timers only a few months ago and each one of them picked different tasks, right? And only one of them picked task number four on the list. Oh, great. That was a pretty important one. Another one picked tasks that were way down on the list. Okay, fine. But it doesn't matter. Keep bringing people in, testing them on projects. You may end up with multiple rock stars, but in any event, your good people are going to gobble more because they want to work, they want to work, and they want to make more. But the purpose of this video was to introduce you to the capture list and what it looks like. If you'd like a copy of that template, please don't hesitate to text us directly and say, I would like a copy of the template for leverage and delegation, the capture list, and we'll get one off to you by, you know, through email. Okay, my question for you today, folks, is what one change or edit might you implement to your, either your thinking or your activities in order to improve your leverage and delegation in the coming year?